Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I'm going to give you a few keys that represent the price that all together will bring you to a new dimension. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that this teaching will not be casual for you, that you will listen to it, not just with your physical ear alone, because the Bible says, he that hath an ear, there is a spiritual ear, and many people do not have it. And so they don't hear. They keep nodding. Sometimes they say, tell them, and at the end of the service, they don't receive anything. I pray that your ears be open and your eyes be open in the name of jesus christ the first price the first price that is responsible for accessing higher realms and dimensions in life and in destiny is the price of a deeper experience with god the price of a deeper experience with god Take me deeper, you know that song? Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I long. To be deeper. Can I tell you, those who will keep making news for the kingdom are those who understand that it is the deeper and the richer your walk with God, the more the sound of your exploits in the spirit. Are we together? Physically speaking, the heavier an object, the more it will make noise when you throw it on the ground. Is that true? When you carry a strand of hair or a feather and you throw it, it will take so long to arrive at the ground and you will almost not know that there is anything there. News is a product of deep relationship with the spirit. You want God to announce you to your world. It is not just looking for opportunities. You have to have a deeper walk with God. A deeper walk with God. Second Kings chapter 9 and verse 30, very popular and powerful scripture. Second Kings 1930, I meant to say. The Bible says the remnant, 1930, 1930. Second Kings 1930, the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah. It says the first thing they shall do is to take root or bear root downwards and then they will bear fruit upwards. Are we together? That those that have escaped and are preserved, if they are to gain stature, they will bear root downwards. For you to understand this, you have to understand agriculture. Please look up. There are grasses and little shrubs that last for days weeks and at best a few months you can pull them up because their roots are not deep sometimes their roots are even visible is that true you can see them and because their roots are not deep you don't expect that they become giant trees if you plant your maize the ridge that you make for maize sometimes it may not even be anything serious just enough to cover it is that true and then it grows because after three months you are going to cut everything away but there are trees, giant oak trees, and many trees that we have in Africa and around the world. Some of those trees are 30 years old, 60 years old, hundreds of years old. And you find out that the root of those trees, without exaggeration, sometimes it can be so deep, deep enough to be the size of a house. And it sinks right to the ground. Are we together? Whether there is rain or no rain, it doesn't wait for any season. It has gone deep enough to touch where there is constant supply. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. 
are we together now hmm. whose leaves does not wither and the reason is because it does not have to wait for seasons to change to flourish it has found its way to get a constant supply of water hallelujah so the deeper your root spiritually in terms of your fellowship with God, in terms of your prayer life, in terms of your love for God, your honor and your spiritual understanding, your, the, the, generally your love and your passion and your fire for God, there is a guarantee from that experience that you will not plateau. Show me a man whose passion for God never goes down. I show you a man whose relevance will remain. Show me a preacher. Show me a businessman. Show me a politician. Show me a career person who has that degree of respect for God. I show you a man that no matter what storms come, he will remain and he will increase. Somebody say more and more. One more time prophesy. Say more and more. Hallelujah. Are we learning? In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, we'll read from verse 10. Please give it to us, media. Let's walk together. 2, Chron 2 Chronicles 15 from verse 10. It says, So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem, reading to 15, in the third month, and in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. Uh -huh, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep, 12. And they entered into a covenant. What was the covenant? To seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. Next verse. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel, it should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Two more verses, 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. The last verse. It says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. What was the secret? They said the issue of seeking God, we bind it as a covenant. We are not going to depend on our emotions. The day I feel good, the day it works well for me, no, I will seek the Lord no matter what happens. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5, speaking about Uzziah, the secret to his prosperity and exploit. The Bible says, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. The word prosper there has nothing to do with money. It means to excel. It means to advance. It means to continue. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. May you never get to any point in your life where you feel you have sought God enough. May you never get to a point in your life where you feel your prayer life is enough. May you never get to any point in your life where you feel your commitment and your passion for God is enough. Are we together? The only place you are permitted to say enough is in acquisitions of material things and then just the earthly study of things he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man but as far as seeking god is concerned even in heaven our pursuit still continues is someone learning exodus chapter 33 and verse 14 we're discussing the first price the price of Deep, a deeper experience with God. This is Moses. They are about to leave. Are we together? Sojourning through the wilderness. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give you rest. Speaking to Moses now. Verse 15. And he said, Moses is replying now, if your presence does not go with us, do not take us away from here. Our journey is useless if we do not have the backing of your presence. This is a word for someone. Before you start taking steps, verify whether God is with you. If money is the only thing that is with you, you are still in trouble. Money can be with you minus God. You are only getting into trouble. 
because even the door that will lead you to trouble must be open too so not every open door is god's door satan also opens doors the prison has doors and just because the prison door is open it can be open for you to enter inside nobody enters into the prison with a closed door the door will first have to be open among the many things you have to verify on your way every once in a while take a break and check what do i have around my life i have results what do i have around my life anointing what do i have around my life fame what do i have around my life more money than i had last year if god is not at the top of everything around you stop there and make sure you secure his presence before the journey continues is someone learning now failure to do that will only cause you casualties this is the mistake of great people they begin with god but then they get to a point in their christian experience where they feel listen do i really need god i've become a celebrity i am famous remember the teaching tonight is not for those who are starting the teaching tonight is the secret for remaining and increasing you know what it takes to start to start the church to start the ministry to start the business be careful when you begin to have results because among the many things that will look too heavy for you to carry may be god and so you can throw god aside so that the luggage will be easier to continue the journey i rather stay in one place with god than to move with other things and without him moses was wise remember when they left egypt i hope you know they did not live empty they left with gold, remember? They left with a lot of things. Moses would have said, we have gold. If enemies come to capture us, we'll just negotiate with them and say, okay, we are not empty, we have gold. But he said, if your presence will not go with us, do not take us away from here. Let's finish that scripture, 16. It says, for wherein shall it be known? Here that I and thy people have found grace in your sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated or distinguished, I and thy people, from the people that are upon the face of the earth. There is a mark that comes upon a destiny that values divine presence. You carry divine presence in ministry, the difference will be clear and unmistakable. You carry divine presence in business. You carry it in raising your children. You carry it in exploring your destiny adventure. Some of you have thrown God so that you have space to collect money. Some of you threw God as a necessary, you threw him away, you are too much of a luggage. I notice that every time I hold you, when people try to offer me money, I can't collect it. Some of you have thrown God so that you will preserve your pride. The price for new dimensions, number one, is a deeper experience with God. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Hallelujah. Never let the pursuit of God become an embarrassment because of where you have arrived. Can I kneel down again? Will it, be, will it not be an inconvenience? Can I lift my hands in worship again with all my subordinates here? I now run a conglomerate with offices in UK, with offices in, 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 in Russia, with offices in America, and all of my subordinates are there. Now I'm a great man of God. I have a lot of sons. Can I be embarrassed to roll on the floor before God? Never get to a point where your love for God becomes a thing of shame. You are already in trouble. Hallelujah. Never let your clothes be too expensive that it cannot touch the ground. <laughs> when the ark of God was being returned back to Jerusalem, David, who was king at that time, he danced in a way that looked like he was a madman. 
the Bible described this as an undignified dance. And his wife, who was Saul's daughter, looked at him in shame and said, Oh dear, what a foolish and stupid king. Look at how you brought reproach to yourself before your contemporaries. And he said, let me tell you something. You, I know you are my wife, but I need to educate you. I am not dancing before this man. I am dancing before God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. David acknowledged that that realm he was given. He was, who would have known? Do you know there is nowhere? David was not like Joseph who had a dream that one day he would become king. The Bible never records, at least Joseph had a consolation. He was dreaming. David never knew. If you ask David in the wilderness, David, who will you become? He will say, I will become a warrior. Not knowing that, that victory was only a starting point. Someone is already celebrating success too much. You are already over-celebrating a little realm. Whereas God's call and destiny for you is that he will make you captain over his inheritance. Is someone learning? Hmm. The God you found in the wilderness must be the God you honor in the palace. If the God you found in the wilderness was powerful enough to bring you in the palace, you would be foolish to throw him away for Dagon. When David came and met Saul and proposed to fight Goliath, Saul said, okay, I am a king. I have the best of armory. Take all my armory and he said, King, I respect you, but I have my weapons that I was trained with. I'm not here to come and it's not just military might. I have a covenant by reason of my seeking God. Let me tell you the truth. In this end time, God will raise unassuming, unusual people. People who when you add them up, they don't equal to the result that should be. But because of their determination to seek and walk with God, God will carry some things as gifts. God will carry the prayer requests of nations and institutions and give individuals as a testament for seeking them. You believe what I'm telling you. You've not seen prosperity yet until you see people who are unassuming, who will be custodians of the wealth of the kingdom, that God will give it to them by himself. If you interview them in terms of business intelligence, the truth is that you will be disappointed. They don't add up. Yet you cannot deny the result because they sought the Lord. There are many, many kinds of graces and anointings that have not yet been released but are coming. I tell you, you will see men rise who are like gods upon the earth power and dimensions miracles and the manifestations of the spirit the deaf ears and the blindness you are talking about it will be common occurrence you will not have to put a crusade for that to happen that people will be walking on the street and they will pass a mortuary and dead bodies will come back to life without the people even knowing that they were used by god to heal the sick this is what God wants to do but there is a price the price of a deeper walk with God father you have blessed me now I have a mansion now I have cars now I have influence but I count them but dung the way I rolled 10 years ago I will see roll in your presence my clothes may have changed but my allegiance will never change my clothes may have changed but my worship will not change my car may have changed my pedigree may have changed but you still remain my God someone pray in one minute Lord, I repent for trying to replace you with many things on my way to greatness. Please pray. For someone, this is why you came to church. You are my God. As a shepherd and as a king, you are my God. 
as an employee and as an entrepreneur you are my God you are my God no matter where I go to no matter where I become You see, let me tell you something. Please listen. Listen and learn. We still have a lot to look at. Do you know, when God begins to lift you and put you in a position of influence, now you are in an elevated position where people watch you. And the first thing they want to watch is who you honor and what you love. You can influence a generation with one encounter to reject Christ because you have mismanaged influence there are many people today who vowed all kinds of vows to God Lord if you lift me I will stand for you but now when you begin to fly around the world you come into a realm of priority living where your name has become a key to many lives chances are excellent that God now becomes a luggage and an inconvenience for you many have lost their touch with God Many have maintained a level at, at a level that God lifts you and you are still doing two verses per day. Honestly, you are not a serious Christian. Maybe for a start as a believer. Hmm. The fast of 10 years ago must be restored back. The prayer of 10 years ago must be restored back. The sitting outside of 10 years ago where you say, Lord, it is in the dead of the night but i'm still awake with you here to worship you i live to worship you i live i live to worship you to worship you i live to worship you i live i live to worship you oh Oh, 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 Hallelujah. You have heard me say this. Everything God gives you is not all he wants to give you. At any point in your life, whatever you receive from God, just know that it is part of the full package, no matter how great it is. God gave me one billion. Ah, that is all. And God is saying, so I, the goal is for 100 billion and billions of dollars to fund the kingdom. And just because you had one billion in your mind, it has carried you away. God gave me a, this. God now made me an estate, uh, whatever it is. Ah. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty and i have undone before you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you are the lord of hosts your glory Can I tell you? You must get to a point in your life where it is not just your knowledge that mentors people. 
even your worship your allegiance to the king of kings will make someone to say listen ordinary i would have laughed at this person but i saw him 10 years ago the same rolling i laughed at the rolling but look where the rolling has brought him today and i will join and also roll if that rolling has brought him to this level don't waste your influence use it to mentor nations don't waste your influence the first prize for new dimensions a deeper walk with god please sit down prize number two let's hurry up so we can pray tonight is someone already blessed the second prize that must be paid a non-negotiable price listen very carefully now just help those under the anointing but please don't be distracted if you must ascend higher levels not only in the spirit but in life and in destiny superior levels of exploits ever increasing testimonies the price of unbending focus that is the second price the price of unbending focus mm. show me a man of unbending focus a man who will not be distracted whether by success or failure i show you a man who will remain and increase philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 even to 15 philippians chapter 3 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended he's speaking to brethren we are talking about Apostle Paul here. Paul the Great. Paul the Anointed. Paul the Miracle Walker. Paul the Learned. Paul the Intelligent. Brethren, I count not myself. That means you can count me to have apprehended. But this is my honest review about my life. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind he never said forgetting wrong things that are behind he never said forgetting thing good things that are behind he said forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before ah there are always things before i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus he says let us therefore as many as be mature that's the meaning of the word perfect be thus minded how minded that means at any point in your life count yourself to not have apprehended are we together now that even though you are honestly receiving an applause justifiably so for the strides the kingdom strides you are making that you get to a point where you do not allow your focus to bend I count myself to not have apprehended but this one thing I do Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 I found this scripture and it was quite interesting the Bible says for the Lord God will help me therefore shall I not be confounded therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed there is a relationship between focus are we together now focus and advancement there is a relationship between distraction and shame the price of unbending focus i wrote a few things here that i want you to see number one under the price for unbending focus you must obtain grace to fight arrival mentality arrival in quote you must obtain grace from god to fight arrival mentality i've arrived at this level of anointing i've arrived at this level of grace i've arrived at this level of revelation i've arrived at this level of prosperity i have 10 estates i'm a billionaire i'm a politician finally i've gotten to be a house member or senator or president or governor or whatever it is i am now a ceo i am now the african representative of this bank or this conglomerate arrival mentality has destroyed many people same philippians please give us 3 and verse 12 let's read 12 and 13 same philippians chapter 3 
from verse 12. Philippians 3, 12. Okay, let me just pull it up here so that we don't waste time. Philippians Hallelujah. All right. He said, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. He says, brethren, now where we read, I count myself. So he's saying, it is not as far as I'm concerned. No matter what you tell me, I still walk like somebody who has something in front. I don't walk like someone who has arrived. You know what arrival mentality is? That means you get to a point where you tell yourself, I'm not talking of contentment. Arrival mentality is very different from contentment. Hallelujah. Where you feel there is nothing more to do with your life as far as maximizing life is concerned. You know that happened to Lucifer? I will ascend above the stars of God and I will be like the Most High. After all, my office is the custodian of the mysteries of heaven. So I think I know everything. Little did he know that there was more. Beware of arrival mentality. I wrote something down here. Both failure and success both discouragement and over celebration of results can be distractions that means success and failure can do the same thing to you eventually failure can discourage you success can create complacency while it is good and honest to celebrate every stride you must be careful and manage your celebration so that you do not over celebrate results now the truth is that when you rise among people who are lower than you, no matter how little, little your result is, it will look big in the eyes of those lower than you. You must be honest with yourself and gauge yourself by a global kingdom standard and then ask yourself, have I really gone there? In Africa, we celebrate very small things, small results, small results. In business, in ministry, you will see a little corporation that maybe is netting just a few million naira even not even dollars and yet the pride that the leaders and the executives have respectfully speaking no just because you can afford food to eat just because you have a house you have a car just because you can afford a bit of luxury living and a few things it does that is not all there is to life there is so much more are we together the price of unbending focus. I talk to myself every time on this wise. Joshua Selman, thank God for what God is doing in your life. My phone is full of text messages from people literally across the globe without exaggeration. Oh, man of God, I listened to this. This one happened. And in all fairness, they are not lying. However, you must tell yourself, everything God has given me now is not all he plans to give me. Every level is the test for the next level. Every level. As soon as you achieve something in a level, know that it is automatically the exam you are writing for the next level. Every level of achievement is the test you must pass for the next level. Are we together? So both failure and success, if you have done well and the world is celebrating you, don't run away, don't push it away and say, no, 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 don't celebrate me, no, no, no. But you must know when to draw the line. The moment celebration becomes flattery and is already planting the seed of complacency, you must stop and say, thank you. I have received enough to motivate me for the next level. My exams have started. You must know when the feast of celebration is over and when you've entered the classroom to write the exams. If you are still dancing in the classroom, believing that the classroom is a place for celebration, you will fail your exams. Thank God for this new level of the prophetic. Thank God for this new level of grace, this new level of insight. But now that you have given me, oh God, thank you for it. But I know it is an exam I'm writing. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
hallelujah there are many many little small prayer groups that will never grow into a giant kingdom platform for blessing the nations because right from infancy many of them are almost killing themselves on an on arrival let me tell you this i'm speaking particularly to those in probably ministry business and all of that let us be very careful let us be very careful let's learn from our fathers there is nothing that somebody can want that has not been given and yet these fathers you see them with humility including businessmen look let me tell you for those of you who have had the opportunity to sit with billionaires and very wealthy people, you will be flattered by their humility and their sense of honor and respect. And you'll be asking, is it really, is it these people? Are? And then the ones that don't have anything, you will know immediately that they don't have anything. Are we together? A wealthy man can enter a restaurant and is very cautious, greeting people, good afternoon, how are you? And somebody will tell you, that's the owner of this restaurant too. And you hear somebody who will sit down five minutes is impatient you've kept me waiting here you don't know who i am you better you see you easily know when people begin to when they lose focus and they lose vision listen i don't know if i've taught it here but if you study the life of gideon there were two tests that they had to pass to qualify the 300 who defeated the midianites when Gideon blew the trumpet, the Bible says 33,000 people came. But there were too many, God said. He said, no, I can't take these people to the place of destiny like this. Test number one, whoever is afraid, whoever loves and misses his home more than the future, go back. And the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back. That means everybody was there. Hey, we'll make it. But some were already dead on arrival. They went back. And he said there are still too many test number two he told them you will get to the water brooks the water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey you would have to make some progress and he says study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water it never takes water sitting or lying down it means and I'm, I'm aware that i still have somewhere to go this is a momentary success by the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time that is a sign of results now you have gotten water to quench your thirst and he said those who sit down that means they have camped i'm not standing up again let them go home their attitude those who lap like dogs that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing but the real journey is not to i didn't leave my home to come and drink water i le left my home to go and defeat the midianites and if i find water on the way thank god but i will not come there and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you price number two the price of unbending focus on bending focus can you still remember the vision of your ministry or you are forgotten can you still remember the vision of your organization can you still remember what you wrote on paper some of you have even misplaced the notebooks where you wrote the visions that govern your life because as at the time you wrote it you didn't have a business as at the time you wrote it you didn't know you would be this great you wrote many things there. Now you cannot even find the book. Buy another one and start again. If the words are really precious, you honor them by writing. He says, write for these words are faithful. Write, they are true. Hallelujah. Mm. If you don't have a vision for your life and the things that you are doing life will give you many visions useless visions that are inconsistent with the blueprint of your call for someone god is speaking to you get back 
go back home and open that notebook the way this ministry is going is that what God told us we started well but on the way they said if you are going like this you'll be hungry and he said so which one works now they said let me tell you the one that works now do this do that and you are veered off from what God told you and your covenant with God are we together On bending focus we need to become people of focus so that you are not distracted thank God for the great things but you must be at your vision thank God for food thank God for the blessings that follow destiny but never be distracted by them I listened to a video I watched a video years ago I think it was by late Steve Jobs. It was a video that they did in 1992 or thereabout. And it was then, you know, um, they were really very small. And he was doing a little training for some of the senior executives of his corporation then. And I listened very carefully to what he told them. He told them that our goal is, you know, I can't remember exactly what he said the goal was, but there was no mention of money there. There was no mention of fame there. There was no mention of reaching the whole world just like a human effort of becoming famous. They were never part of the goals. The goal was to be able, based on what they said, to at least be able to contribute to make the world a better place by offering whatever it is that they were offering. I said, no wonder they became great. For someone from beginning, you say, this life, my share, it must come. That's your goal. And you find now you won't go far that way because already you are already at the corridors of compromise because the goal is not the goal is not pure and not um the goal is not superior enough to guide your life and word of distractions number three hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching